it's time to get my cooling system ready with this champion radiator. So to start off, make sure to put anti-seize on the threads on the ORB fittings. Trust me on this. Since my Detroit Speed Wonder Bar blocks the bottom radiator hose, I had to use this adapter fitting. With that cleared up, I dropped the radiator in place. The first thing I did was threw some riv nuts into the radiator. These will be used to mount the fans later on. I'll be installing a riv nut where the old factory U nut was. I taped off the area to avoid damaging my paint. I then reamed the hole up to full size. A M8 riv nut is installed. As many might be able to tell, I really like using riv nuts, so you'll be seeing a lot of them. I had these aluminum countersink washers laying around, so I might as well use them. I used some scrap stainless steel plate I had laying around to make these radiator mounts. Simple, easy, lightweight, and they look pretty good. I'll be using these 1998 through 2002 F-body fans. In order to use these fans, a few plastic cuts will need to be made. These tabs are cut off, and a few minor trims here and there. It's pretty easy overall. The reason these fans are pretty popular is because they flow a good amount of air and are pretty cheap. I spent about $100 on these for a junkyard set. Overall, that's about one third the cost compared to an aftermarket fan setup. But what's nice about these factory fans is they actually flow more air than an aftermarket one. These three holes line up where the rib nuts were placed in the radiator at the beginning of the video. The fans are dropped in and secured by some M6 hardware I had laying around. The wide washers help distribute load around the plastic. It was a fairly easy job with minimal cursing. I call that a win. I ended up stuffing some material between the radiator and the car. That way, it won't be metal on metal. I used some Dash 4 stainless hose for my steam port. My brother happened to have some laying around, so I used it. My front and rear steam ports are connected together with a quarter inch hose. Next comes the radiator hoses. I used a Master Pro 21736 as the bottom hose. I cut it up a bit to fit my weird 90 degree angle fitting. I used a band style clamp for the radiator hoses, but later switched to a high end breeze clamp as the band style clamps tend to leak. The top hose is a Master Pro 20795, and of course it was trimmed down to fit. This heater hose bypass will do until I figure out what I'm going to do with my HVAC system. I use this vacuum tool to leak check the system. 
It actually had a very small vacuum leak that bled off after about five minutes or so. It sounds like it's coming from the water pump, but I'll deal with that later. The cooling system was able to hold about 15 psi of pressure overnight without leaking, so I'll guess I'll deal with a possible leak later on. To build on what I was talking about before, one of the supplied barbs seized on the radiators by just loosely hand tightening it, and it would not come off. A torch, penetrating oil, and a two foot wrench were all defeated. I had to cut the barb off and slowly grind the threads out. Luckily, this giant Harbor Freight MPT tap seems to be very close to dash 16 AN. So make sure to use anti-seize on the threads. Trust me on this one. To ensure I didn't have a leaky radiator, I used a dash 16 pressure test kit. The radiator was able to hold about 12 PSI before the cap released pressure, just like it should. No air bubbles, so I think I lucked out. If you like this content, you can support me on Patreon, and remember to follow me on Instagram.